Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin Excel TV. Today, I would like to share how to create combo box on user form and add items on it, as well as get the position of the selected item. Let's press it to developer tab. Click on Visual Basic. We should first insert a user form. Adjust the size of the form if needed. Choose the depth control. Go to the desired place and insert the combo box. If you wish not to insert or add the items by using Wavy coding, we can actually make use of the properties window. The thing that we should take care of here is firstly, column count. Check how many columns do we have? One, two, three. We should change the column count to three. If we have headers, set the column heads to two. For the column widths, we can deal with later scroll down and look for the row source this is the place where we input the range of data that we want exclude the header so for example we want to insert this cell of data to the combo box starting from a2 we should always exclude the header so we should start by giving the name of this sheet which is user Form, followed by exclamation mark and the range start from A to use colon to indicate range and scroll down and check for the last cell of the data set which is C the D so we type here C the D press enter and we should have the data set being set to this combo box let's run the user form click on the user form and click on run Click on the drop down and we should have the table that we want. Unfortunately, as we can see, the alignment seems like not really nice. To make it better, we can adjust the column widths. Let's back to VB. What we have to do here again, click on the combo box and now we should look for the column widths. We are supposed to give three values since we have three columns here. We can make use of point or cm centimeter i'm going to use centimeter here first column let's say two centimeters use semicolon to split in between columns second we have five cm and the third we have two cm press enter and excel will auto correct it the value to point and if let's say we want to adjust the size of the combo box the width according to the total with of these columns, we can add up the value and scroll down, look for the width and change accordingly. Or we can make use of CM as well. We can take 2 plus 5 plus 2, which is equal to 9. And this value must be converted to point. Otherwise, we will result an error. If let's say we don't know how to convert this matter, we just ask Google. From here, we can see that it's about 255.1. So we can change to 255.1. Press enter. And now let's click the user form again and click on run. Click on the drop down and the paper should be listed nicely as we can see here. One issue we should take note is this combo box is not fully automated because if let's say the user added a new item for example d08 when we call again the user form the list is not up to date as we can see here in order to overcome this issue instead of using range we can make use of the table so we can convert this range to a table select the entire range either we make use of the shortcut key press ctrl t or click on this and click on tables and we convert to table go to formulas and change the name if needed we can edit the name here for example we change to data and click on ok what we have to do next is proceed to the visual basic and click on the combo box scroll down and look for the row source and this time we should change the range to a third so when we click on run the user form everything will be automated even if we added a new item for example let's check d08 
and D09. Let's call the user form again. So when we call the user form, everything will be updated here. This is also applicable if we remove certain items from the list, for example, these two. And we right click, look for delete. Now let's back to the user form, call again. We should have deleted the two items as we can see here. If you want to convert the table back to normal range, simply click on one of the cells and press Ctrl A for two times. Right click, click on table, convert to a range, click on yes, and the table will be converted to normal range. But then the format will still be there. To remove format, go to cell styles and click on normal and all format will be removed. Now try to add the items by using VB coding. So what we have to do here is delete the existing user form so that we don't have to reset the format or the properties that we set previously. So we insert a new one, adjust as usual, also insert the combo box. What we have to do next is right click the user form and look for will could click it we should change this to initialize which means that every time the user form is being called we should update the combo box all we have to do here is we need a dummy to read how many rows we have just like adding like a table so every time we'll update the number of rows automatically so we use the dummy let's say a is equal to refer to the sheet that contains the detail set so for this case is sheet number three the user form so we have sheet three dot cells what we have to do here is refer to the first row first column in order to gather how many rows we have we just have to run through this first column to the bottom means that to the end of this column so we are going to use the dot end property however when we press dot end as we can see we don't have any suggestion here we are we are not sure whether we type correctly or wrongly so one method to overcome this issue is we ignore the location of the cell first but we press end directly as you can see we will have the suggestion and bracket we can choose what we want to do we want to move down so that we are able to know how many rows we have of course to know the number of row we have to read the row number once everything is done we can now add the location which is first row first column and down to the bottom next i'm going to run through the value in the first column only because if we know the row position for the first value that means that for the second and third automatically we know since they are from the same row and this case we are going to make use of the for loop for every single cell so for each cell in the range and this range comes from user form user form the code is sheet 3 so we have to type sheet 3 here dot range and the range should cover starting from the first data set so which means that a2 and must be in terms of string so start with the quotation marks colon to indicate range and the last one should be a something but the something will be taken by a. so we use ampersand to connect string and now we can call the combo box so i'm going to use the with function so that we don't have to use user form one dot combo box one and repeat again user form one dot combo box one every time we call the combo box so with this with function we just have to call for one time we can use user form one dot combo box one or simply me since me here stand for the object user form dot combo box one and what we have to do here is to dot and call the property for the column count we want to let the excel to know how many columns we have for this case we are three next is i want to adjust the column widths so we have the column with here we're supposed to have three values remember must be in terms of string 
So we have two cm semicolon to split in between the columns, followed by 5 cm, followed by 2 cm. And next, I'm going to have the width. As usual, let's say we don't know the value in terms of points. For 9 cm, we can ask Google. So for this case, it's supposed to be 255.1, must be in terms of point. And next is to start to add items. So of course we call the add property. So we have dot add item. What to be added is the value in this cell. So we add the cell here, then dot list. We are going to make like a paper. So for this list, of course we need to tell the position of the row. So we are going to make use of the dot list count. To check the first column, we are currently in which row. We should bear in mind that first row means zero, second row one, third row two. If you want to have row zero, which is the first row, we should minus one since we already added one item here. Once one item is added, when we count the list, we will have one. So one minus one is equal to zero, which means that the first row. And we want to have the second column. So also minus one. Two minus one, we obtain one. And next is make use of their offset property. So cell dot offset. Why we want to offset is we want to switch in between the position of the column. If you want to shift in between row, move up minus, move down plus. Since we are not moving because we want to maintain as the same leverage since they are from the same row, we just want to shift in between columns. So move to the left minus, move to the right plus for this case is moved to the right so we plus one so row remain at the same level so zero but column we should move to the right for one step so one and next we have another column here so we can copy and paste it here we just have to change the position accordingly this is for the third column so three minus one is two and this is for the that column, so one and two steps. So we have two here. Start with if, of course, we need to end with if. Completed the first cell, of course, we have to proceed to the next cell and so on. Basically, we have finished the coding part. Let's back to user form and run the user form. So when we click, we should have all the information here as we can see. Oh, if let's say we want to hide certain column, let's back to the coding part. Right click and we could. So if let's say we want to hide a certain column, we just have to change the column width to zero. For example, we want to hide the second column. So we just have to put zero here. Let's see. So double click the user form and run it. So when we click, as we can see, the second row is hidden. So this is one way to hide or so-called unselect the column. Up to this point, someone might be questioning how if you want the header exactly the same as this range. To add header, I will make use of another method. So right click the user form, we'll could. I'm going to remove this could first, cut. If we want to retain, we can paste at the bottom with another project so we can add sub for let's say method one and we paste the code here so this code will not be executed unless we call the method one so now what we have to do here is to add the code that we want the user form to perform let's copy starting from with until end with we just have to modify this make our life easier so with me combo box one, this one we can retain. How many columns? Yes, we still need. What is the column width? Of course, yes, we need. So let's change back to 5 cm for this case. And the width means that the length of the combo box still need. But the list that we added one by one, we should remove since we are going to add the entire range at once printed on the combo box. So what we have to do here is make use of dot 
or yeah, raw source. I'm going to make use of paper so that it's easier. So back to the worksheet, select the entire range. So we add the paper like previously done. So what we need here is change the name back to theta and click on OK. Close and back to Visual Basic. What we have to do here is set the row source be equal to theta. Remember, must be in terms of string. Next is to add the header property. So dot column heads. And we should set it be true. Let's see the result. Double click on user form and run it. Click and check. We have the header now. Since we have reached the coding part, let's learn how to obtain the position of the selected item. Let's back to Visual Basic. I'm going to add a command button to get the value. Double click and insert the code here. Also, if let's say you want to call the Compose box for a few of times, then also make use of the with function so that we can simplify our work. Just have to write for one time. Remember, start with with. Of course, we need to end with with. I'm going to make use of message box to print the value. So the property that is used to read the position of the row is the dot list index. Let's see the result. So call the user form, run, select anything from the table. Let's say we want the pink lady. The position is row six. When we click on the command button, we should have five. Always bear in mind that it's always n minus one position. Now, if you want to print values in the second and the third columns, let's back to Visual Basic. Back to the command button. I'm going to add a quit here by using the dot list property so that we can make use of list. This is the position of the row, and what we need here is for the second and the third column, which means that we should take the value of one and two respectively. Recall that always start from zero for the first column. So we have one. And we just have to use emphasis to connect in between the string that we have. If last thing we want to have space in between, of course, we need to add space. And this will be 2. And we just have to use emphasis to connect in between the space. We make a space in between the quotation marks so that we will print the space. Let's try back to user form and run the user form. Select a value, for example, pink lady apple, click on command button, and we should have pink lady apple with the value 1.6. Check as we can see exactly correct. We could also form a sentence by using the values that we read. Let's back to the visual basic. Double click, for example, we want to write you have selected with the quotation mark to indicate string emphasis to connect in between the string. So we have here you have selected the item and this is the price. So we shall write with you need price of the second value. Let's check the output. Double click on the user form, run the user form, select item. And click as we can see you have selected golden delicious apple with unit price of 2.5 okay that's all for this video thanks for watching hope you like this see you